All right, breaking news out of college football. UNLV quarterback Matthew Solka is out for the season due to a discrepancy in agreed upon terms of an NIL deal despite UNLV starting 3-0 and beating Kansas. This is a major, major story. So apparently alongside this, UNLV running back Michael Allen also has decided he will redshirt and sit out the rest of the season despite the team's 3-0 start. Rushed for 108 yards in three games. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Again, this is reported by Bleacher Report. Others have obviously reported it as well, but... Um, Let's, let's, let's read the full story. Solka to lead program over representations that were not upheld. I decided to redshirt my, I've decided to utilize my redshirt year and will not be playing in any additional games this season. I committed to UCL, UCLA, Jesus. I can't read. UNLV based on certain representations that were not made to me, which were not upheld after I enrolled. Despite discussions, it became clear that these commitments would not be fulfilled in the future. I wish my teammates the best of luck in this season and hope for the continued success of the program. Okay, so there are not a lot of details there. Not a lot of details. And immediately you see both sides of this equation coming out. Really the entitled player side of this leaking out. And quite frankly, I can understand why people look at this and go, wait a second, another consequence of the NIL era, of the transfer portal era. And I was going to do a video on the transfer portal anyway because I am a, a massive detractor from the transfer portal. I think it ruins college athletics. I think it encourages selfishness as a player over team value. I think it encourages a lack of integrity. I think it encourages a lot of things that don't build you for the next level that you are going to inherently go to if you are an NFL caliber player. <laughs> now, I'm not I'm not saying that people shouldn't get opportunities, and if you wait and wait and, and you're not getting your opportunity, whatever. It just, to me, feels like there's a lack of commitment to program. There's a lack of pride in playing for a team. Again, you're playing more for yourself than you are the actual team, and you're just going to the highest bidder based on whatever happens in six months. Used to be you had to, to sign a letter of intent to be at a college for years. Now, after six months, you don't like the way the coach is speaking to you. You don't like being coached uh, hard. You don't like hearing that you're not super special or you're not God's gift to football. You can pack your stuff and get out of that school and go to another like you were never there in the first place. No time to bring in the traditions, no time to understand why you wear the name on the front of your jersey more than you wear the name on the back. All that stuff, I think, has been destroyed by the transfer portal. Shout out to Coach JB. You guys should watch his channel. I think it's a good one. He calls it mercenary football, and, and I think he's right about that. Now, the NIL, I, I've taken a little bit of a softer stance on because I feel players' likeness being used as it has for years and years and years and years has been, quite frankly, stealing from collegiate players that bring millions of dollars into universities, especially at the highest level. Uh, it is in its infancy, though. So while we do have, again, I'm a Tennessee Vol fan. You guys, I think, know this by now. Nico Iamaliava on, I think it's an $8 million NIL deal down at Tennessee. Other schools are not going to have that same number and vice versa. It's not always going to be the same. And because it's so new, you're going to have situations like this. And I'm not even sure that Matthew uh, Sluka is the first one. But he certainly won't be the last where there's been some discrepancy in what he was promised versus what he will get. And this young man has either screwed himself or gotten screwed by somebody, whether that's representing him or elsewise, to the point where now he is effectively shown the world that he will quit on his team and I hate to say it that way and I'm not I'm, I'm not just I'm not here to criticize and put the young man down and say oh look at this guy not committed to his team who wants to recruit him but he will in the public eye look like a liability to your locker room this is from Nicole Arbach NCAA statement in light of today's UNLV news the NCAA fully supports sorry the NCAA fully supports college athletes profiting from the NIL but unfortunately, there is little oversight or accountability in the NIL space, and far too many promises made to student-athletes are broken. 
Positive changes are underway at the NCAA to deliver more benefits to student athletes without clear legal authority granted by courts or Congress. The NCAA conferences and schools have limited authority to regulate third parties involved in NIL transactions. This is the biggest problem to me, and the NCAA doesn't get a lot right this. When the NIL, again, was birthed, this seemed like a very good thing, and it is. To me, it is. It's a good thing to be able to pay players for what they earn as a representative of the university and making the university millions of dollars or whatever that number is. But we're essentially in the wild, wild west of this thing. I don't know who's regulating these deals. I don't know how these contracts even look. And apparently, and we'll, we'll get into it, there was no contract here for Matthew Sluka. Apparently, this was a handshake deal, a, a, a verbal promise, essentially. Um, but there's also two sides to this story, so, so we're just going to have to keep going. The point I'm trying to make is, if you're not getting things in writing, and any deal... And trust me, I've been on the end of some bad ones in the boxing space. Uh, Marcus, let's listen to more of this uh, saga from Pete Thamel. As he writes, Marcus Cromarty, Sluka's NIL agent, which, by the way, I've heard of some of these NIL agents being just like seven-on-seven seven coaches that coach these kids through high school or, or specific position coaches for the kids outside of high school that just... Became agents for these kids because they know them kind of well and because NIL is rife with inexperienced goofballs that don't have any business at a negotiating table. They'd be better off served at the freaking lunch cafeteria table being high school football coaches on a, not even, not even as a head coach, on a like assistant level job. And this is the problem as we go back. Marcus Cromartie told Pete Thamel of ESPN that the quarterback was, quote, verbally promised a minimum of $100,000 by an assistant coach if he transferred to UNLV. Cromartie told Thamel none of the money was paid. Hello! In what world do you transfer on a promise of money without any sort of verb of actual physical contract? I don't, I don't even blame... Matthew Sluka here. Not as much as I blame his parents for entrusting their child to whoever this Marcus Cromartie is. And how much I blame this Marcus fucking Cromartie guy, who is the big wig, who is the big NIL agent that wasn't even experienced to of, who was the big NIL agent that's a smart guy, who's the big NIL agent that wasn't even experienced enough in any sort of business negotiation to understand he needed to get whatever verbal promise he was made in writing. Agent Marcus Cromartie of Equity Sports first introduced himself via email to UNLV collective officials in late August, Sign said. Cromartie wrote to officials that he was seeking more NIL opportunities through the collective for his client. However... Science said Cromartie is not, is not a registered agent in the state of Nevada. Because of this, he advised Cromartie Sluka to discuss the situation directly with the coaching staff until Cromartie registers in the state. So not only... <laughs> and listen, I know that this Matthew Sluka kid is, is like in his fifth year now, right? And he's going to redshirt. So he's not just a kid. He's not 18. He, he's, you know, he's grown. He should have, and, and again, I, I blame more of his parents or whoever is overseeing him for allowing him to be taken under the wing of an agent that's not even licensed to give this kid this bad of rap when the guy clearly doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. Making him look like an absolute imbecile. Not only the, the, the agent, but now making the quarterback look that way because now he, he is quitting the team under a false premise that he was promised $100,000. Maybe he was by some assistant coach. Maybe he was. And that's wrong too, by the way. But this is why you have to get it in writing. You know what probably happened? And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't want to speculate. But knowing now that this agent is not registered, has no real business in any sort of agency ever, had no idea that he needed to get a contract in writing, anything physically, before he sent his client off to UNLV. You know what probably happened? He probably convinced this guy. Again, speculation Wade, tinfoil hat Wade. He probably convinced this kid 
to go to UNLV on the premise or maybe something that he had deluded himself into thinking was a $100,000 promise. I hope he didn't just pull the number out of thin air. But with the idea that oh, once we get Matthew Sluka there, then we can talk to them about giving him the money. That's going to be easy. That's the way this, this operation seems to have been run. Well, let's just get him there and then we'll figure it out. So we'll see what happens with this Matthew Sluka thing. But as it looks right now, he is absolutely screwed. But I understand a little bit of wanting to leave because of the, the amount of money that, you know, again, you should have gotten writing. But that can maybe change his life. This running back, selfish, selfish football, selfish transfer portal, me, 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 I want my carries football, has no place in the college ranks, really has no place in the pro ranks, because what is it, if if football was a one-person game, we wouldn't have 11 people on either side, you're part of a team, you don't like that you're not the starter, work harder, you don't like you're not being featured the way you want, do something different, change what you're doing. Stop complaining and don't look for the easy way out. I'm sorry. That's all I got to say. I'll see you guys in the next one.